Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Texan News Scoop, your weekend review of this week's top stories from the campus region and beyond. Today is July 23rd, 2015, and I'm Katie Tonkin. I'm Clifford Jones, and here are this week's top stories. Carlton puts up statue of John Tarleton, $60 million drug bust in Erath County, man arrested for pointing a laser at airplanes, Earth-like planet is discovered, and Chris Brown delayed departure from the Philippines. In campus news, according to the Tarleton website, a statue of John Tarleton, the university's legendary founder, is being put on campus. A ceremony will take place Monday, July 27th at 8 p.m. Here's an interview with President Dominic DeTavio with Texan News' very own Denise Haroff. Hi, I'm Denise Haroff, and I'm here with President Dominic DeTavio to talk about the Tarleton statue that will be unveiled tonight. So, Dr. D, will you tell us a little bit about the event that's planned? Uh, certainly. It's going to be, I think, one of those historic days for the campus because we have the uh, unique opportunity to uh, unveil a statue of our founder, John Tarleton. Uh, the components to this tonight are going to be, obviously, there are going to be a few people that say some words um, about uh, John Tarleton, about the statue itself, and, and why John Tarleton looks the way he does. Um, we begin about 8 o'clock, and uh, we hope to have the, the big reveal, if you will, probably about, oh, I, I want to say quarter till 8 or 9 o'clock tonight. So where did the statue come from? Who created it and uh, built it? What was the process? Yeah, uh, the the uh, artist behind it is Kenneth Wyatt. Uh, Kenneth is a 1946 graduate of Tarleton. So uh, back when it was a two-year college and Kenneth has gone on to be really in many ways probably the most uh, Texas, modern Texas uh, artist. Um, he's produced uh, literally thousands of paintings and sculptures of very various kinds. So Kenneth was responsible for first looking at John Tarleton's life, uh, finding whatever material he could about, um, about John Tarleton, and then creating a two-foot, what is called a maquette, a clay model of the statue. And then from there, it was sent to a foundry in Oklahoma, a crucible, and they used lasers essentially to take the details that Kenneth put into that two-foot clay model and blow it up to something that's approaching about 10 feet in size uh, because of weight considerations and the like. I think they had to um, make it in three different pieces and then weld it together. And then Kenneth uh, had to go back, had to go to the foundry and deal with the patina and the like that uh, is on the bronze. <laughs> so Dr. D, can you give us a little bit of a detail about a sneak peek about the statue? Do you know what it's made of or anything like that? Sure, uh, I can tell you a little bit about it. Uh, it's made out of bronze, uh, which is a typical material for a, a statue like this uh, that's going to be outside. It's also about 10 feet tall. I don't know the exact dimension, but it's, uh, it's larger than life. And uh, Kenneth Wyatt, the artist, spent a great deal of time looking at John Tarleton's life, understanding the, a bit about the one picture that we have of him. And as an artist, he, he decided that there were some things that he wanted to put into this uh, that will help to create the man more as we know who he was throughout his life. And so uh, something that's going to be uh, in, on the statue is he'll be holding a cane to represent the, the amount of walking that he did. The hat that is so famously on his head, he believes was really painted onto the picture. Uh, rather than being really part of the picture itself. And because of that, he chose not to leave it on his head, but to put it at his side. Uh, and he's done a fabulous job of characterizing John Tarleton, both as somebody that uh, walked as part of his, uh, of his legend, but also as a successful businessman. So how long has it been planned to implement this statue? Uh, the project itself has actually been in place for several years uh, and it's just taken a lot of time to get to the point that um, what it is that was going to be uh, the statue of John Tarleton, uh, what it was going to look like, uh, exactly where it was going to be placed, uh, took a, a lot of detailed planning and the involvement of uh, a variety of different people beginning with the, uh, the architect who really laid out the plaza and the like where John Tarleton will stand. So is there something that the university is trying to say by implementing the statue? Is there 
What's the point to it all? Yes. Well, I think uh, the most important point is uh, this is our founder who has served as an inspiration and a motivator for tens of thousands of students to receive their degree from Tarleton. Uh, John Tarleton himself was a visionary. Uh, he was focused on service to his community and he was foc focused on excellence. And so in many ways, this statue is representing some of the most important core values of this university. And then obviously, John Tarleton is part of our tradition and we have many traditions that surround the man himself, uh, like Oscar P and not walking on the grass. And so this cements those traditions and should make every Tarleton student feel very, very proud to be a part of this university. So did the, was there a large cost for the statue or was it a donation or how well, will that be paid for? Uh, as it turns out, uh, the artist is contributing all of his time and, and uh, part of the markup uh, or the makeup of the statue itself. And then um, we had a very significant donation from Alpha Building Corporation to uh, deal with the foundry work and the bronzing and things of that nature and the installation. And so it's a complete donation of, of the statue to the university. So who decided that it would be placed where it'll be placed tonight? It was recommended by the architect that this is where he should go on the alumni island. There were about 15 people there the day that uh, John arrived to try to decide just which way should he turn. And so it was a group effort on the exact, exact location, but the, the larger location within the center of the uh, um, alumni island was really something that the architect had, had uh, identified for us. Why is it being implemented this year? Why not a few years from now or a few years ago? What makes right. it significant to this time? Well, uh, it's the uh, coming together of uh, a variety of different projects, not the least of which is the renovation of Alumni Island from a parking lot back to what it was initially and why it became such an important part for our alumni, a gathering place. It was, it's at the conclusion of the, uh, of the renovation in addition to the grant building. And uh, then it is the beginning in many ways of a large project that's going to celebrate our centennial as a member of the Texas A&M University system. Where the Tarleton statue is, will be the beginning point for a large pedestrian mall that connects the far corners of the campus out to Vanderbilt Street, up to the football stadium, and across Lillian Street from Washington to Fry. And so this is really, in many ways, the anchor and the beginning of that large centennial, uh, centennial celebration. How interesting. I mm -hmm. bet that'll look great once it's all finished. It will look <laughs> fabulous. It will look fabulous. And uh, we are just in the process of designing the rest of those components, and we hope to be under construction for those maybe next uh, spring or, or summer. So how else do you feel that the campus community will benefit from this beautiful statue yeah. to look at on their daily I think on routines. a daily basis, it's going to inspire our students. It's going to remind them of those core values that we hold uh, so deeply at this university. And I think it's going to make them extraordinarily proud that uh, this is indeed Tarleton State University and a man of vision and a man of character, a man of integrity, a man of service and excellence was responsible for them receiving their education. So is there anything you'd like to add? Come out to the uh, program this evening and uh, see the big reveal. I think, uh, I think people are going to love it and I think it's going to be a fabulous, uh, well-used gathering space for students for generations to come. Thank you so much, Dr. DeTavio, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And now back to you, Katie and Clifford. In local news, according to the Stephenville Empire Tribune, on July 17th, a $60 million drug bust took place on private property in the southern part of Erath County. This is a complicated case because it involves the local, state, and federal authorities, said DPS spokesman Dub Gillum. Many agencies were involved in the seizure of the 10,000 marijuana plants, an estimated street value of $60,690,000. In state news, according to the Associated Press, several commercial planes flying near Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport had to change their paths after being targeted by a laser light. The Federal Aviation Administration said nobody was hurt in the nine incidents leading to the arrest on Wednesday. 
a Texas Department of Public Safety helicopter that also came under the laser light, led Johnson County Sheriff's deputies to a rural home. Austin Lawrence Seifert of Alvarado was arrested on a misdemeanor charge of illumination of an aircraft by intense light. Deputies confiscated a laser light and Seifert was held on a $300 bond with no attorney listed to speak on his behalf. In international news, in national news, according to the Associated Press, scientists at Cape Canaveral, Florida, have identified the best bet for an Earth-like planet that might harbor life. The researchers announced their discovery Thursday based on observations from NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. This older, bigger planet to Earth is called Kepler 452b. The planet orbits a star about the same distance that Earth orbits the Sun. Its home star also looks to be similar to our Sun. Scientists say the closest thing we have to another Earth Sun twin system. Scientists say there's a good chance the planet's surface is rocky. The planet is in a solar system that is 1,400 light years from our own. In international news, according to the Associated Press, Chris Brown's departure from the Philippines was delayed because of fraud allegations against him and his promoter, John Michael Pio Rota. The Bureau of Immigration placed international artist Chris Brown and his promoter John Michael Fiorada in its Immigration Lookout Bulletin, pursuant to an order by the Department of Justice on July 21, 2015. The order directed the BI to require foreign nationals subject of the ILB to obtain an Immigration Clearance Certificate or ECC before they can be allowed to depart from the country. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Texan News Scoop, a product of the Texan News Service from the Charlton campus in Stephenville, Texas. Today's show was produced by De Denise Haroff and Keanu Press. My name is Katie Tonkin. And I'm Clifford Jones. Have a great week.